has opened and the atmosphere has shifted. <laughs> We're in the midst of the God who makes the impossible possible. We are before you. We bow down in adoration before a God who reigns and rules. Before the creator of the heavens and the earth. No matter what's going on, when you come in the room, you shift the atmosphere. When you come in the marriage, you turn things around. When you come into the parenting, you make all things possible. When you come into the business, the losses stop and profits begin to appear. When you come into our academic careers and our lives, you turn things around. The atmosphere shifts and we know that you are in the room, you are in our lives. Thank you. Thank you for being a miracle working God. Thank you for never being too late. And thank you for being our light and our salvation. We have no need to fear. Today we come sitting at your feet, King of Kings, ready to hear from you, ready to obey you. And we thank you for a fresh word and now word. There's no element of Gertrude here, no. It's just you. Just a vessel. Humble myself before you. Use me to be a blessing to your loving children. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Good morning, CCC Apenko family. Have a seat. How are you? I hope you're all well. I've had a very interesting week. How has your week been? Good? You can see from my hair that I've had a very interesting week. I mean, I, I do look. I, 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 I give a thumbs up to my hairstylist. But you can see that he really puts a lot into it. Today I'm going to be talking to you about loving and the highest form of giving through our love. And I can tell you, I was asking God, God, when I'm teaching or when I'm speaking, I like to get something to use as a symbol to express what I'm teaching. And as I thought about it, I was thinking about my hair. My hairstylist, why? Because my hairstylist puts his heart, mind, and soul into styling this hair, I'm telling you. I was telling somebody that this portion represents how much he loves styling hair with his mind, then this portion is his body, then this portion is his soul, and there's a spray somewhere at the back, with all the nets he puts on top. I, I just asked for a simple ponytail, trust me, to go to a wedding, and this is what he came, this is as simple as he could get. And I was just looking at it, and I was like, wow. This man loves what he does, because he puts so much into it. And then I thought about how God instructs us in Mark, that we should love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our spirit. Then I went deeper. You know, when I want a Paul from the Bible, the one person I go to, my friends of mine starts doing this. She's talking about only one person. My pastor, my macho hubby. And he's away um, in Takrade, seeing to the final part of the funeral rites for his late father. Thank you, family, for supporting us and standing with us such a difficult time. God bless you. I went to my husband, and he was telling me about how King Solomon loved the Lord. King Solomon loved God. It's clearly stated in 1 Kings chapter 3 that Solomon loved God. You look at 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, it tells you Solomon loved God. Even though his love was not perfect, Solomon loved God. He loved him so much that he gave. You look at 1 Kings 3, it tells you that God, God had an encounter with Solomon. And when Solomon showed his love by giving God the thousand, thousand burnt offerings, I don't know if there's any other portion in the Bible where it talks about people giving thousands or ten thousand. A thousand burnt offerings. And that love, that gesture of love, that giving moved God to what? Come over to Solomon's place and say, Solomon, what do you need? How would you feel if God came to you and asked you, what do you need? You show so much love to God and God comes. What do you need? What do you want? You've, you've moved me with your love. You've moved me with your giving. 
And so I'm here to ask you, is there something you need? Kwenu, is there something you need? I want to also show you that love. Is there something you need? And then I thought about it and I was like, hey, Sofo, no creole. And you realize that at that point, when God answered Solomon's request and Solomon asked for wisdom and understanding, the Bible tells us that the wisdom God gave Solomon, no size. Then I remembered. I remembered the verse in 1 Corinthians 2 9, where he says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Neither has it been imagined in the minds what God has in store for those that, for them that love the Lord. And I was like, ah, oh, where you are? That's it. God gave Solomon an understanding and a wisdom that no eye has seen, no ear. And it all came about when Solomon gave. His love provoked him to give an offering to God that was beyond reason. He gave his all. And he loved God in such a way that he did not hesitate to say that, hey, he had kind offerings. He has a abroso. He gave. Do we love God that much? Do we love him? Are we ready to have in our lives all that God has said? That he stored up for all those who love him. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Please. Take out any form. Family, online family. Hi, good to have you online. Take out your notebooks. Take out your pens. By the grace and mercies of God, we are going to have a very good lesson today. Today we are looking at the highest form of giving. The greatest, the highest form of giving. And it says love. Because when you love, you give. You give. Take notes. We've looked at 1 Kings chapter 3. So note it down. When you go home, you can go over it. Look at how Solomon expressed his love. We've also looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And now I want you to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The chapter on love. 1 Corinthians 13. The chapter on love. Are we there? Are we there, please? I can't hear you, family. Oh, I should order fufu for the whole congregation right now. Look at how Ajay is nodding. Hey, you want to turn service into a fufu party? <laughs> Okay, let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you are there, can you give me a wave? Good, good. Okay, that chapter tells us about love. Am I right? Am I right? Good. Pastor Eric, which verse starts that love is patient and kind? This is it verse 4? Good. So let's read from verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. I want to pause here. Are we patient and kind to God? If we say we love him, are we patient? When I've cried out to God and I'm asking God to answer a prayer request and it's not coming, am I patient? Or do I rush off trying to find the solution myself? Am I kind? Do I give to God? Or I'm only here expecting God to give to me? Remember some weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, we had a guest pastor here who was talking to us about the transactional relationship and the transformational relationship. Where when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, we can decide to stand at a point of transaction. Hey, you ready? favor. I walk with favor. I walk with favor. Doors are opening. I'm getting a new car. God, I'm trusting you for that house. Hey, I'll have houses I didn't build. Hey. Or we get into a relationship with God. Where he says that, Lord, no matter what. Oh, my car, oh, my dying. One found my meal, one found the mammy. 
Bedo, Medima Kumbanina Bedo. Then we stand with the songwriter and sing the songs. Bedo, Bedo, Nama Sumuye, Sway Bedo, Bedo, Nama Sumuye, Sway so we do we take a stance of I'm loving you God no matter what season I'm going through no matter what's happening I'm going to be patient and kind I'm going to give you my all I'm going to love you with all of me Then I went on, and as I looked through my husband's steady notes, I was like, God, this is big. Loving you is not a relationship like, let me use a sugar daddy and a sugar daughter, if I should put it that way. Where sometimes a sugar daddy can disappoint. No. The God we are loving loves us with his all, eternally, unconditionally irrespective of whatever we do, whatever happens, he loves us. And he never stops loving us. And he calls us, he commands us to love him. And he says in his word that all the commandments are hinged on these, this, this greatest, the two, these two commandments. Love me with all your heart, mind, body, soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. They kind of encompass compromise all the commandments in the Bible so I'm sure by now you're asking okay so mommy I've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior how do I love him what do I do you obey you give three things can we take notes please our time just three things three simple things our time give God your time Anyone who loves someone is eager to spend the first moments of their day with a person. Am I right, Bernard? Yes. And he tells us, seek me first. And as you seek God first every day of your life, every moment, he promises that what? All other things he would give to you because he also loves you. It's a two-way love affair. It's not like the sugar daddy and the sugar daughter. Where the sugar daughter may love the sugar daddy, but the sugar daddy may not love. <laughs> no. Give him your time. Every day. Every moment. Give him your time. Give in church. Give your time in service. Number two. I made it all teas. Pastor made it all tea, so it's easy for us to remember. First T is our time. Second our talents, all the giftings God has given us, we should give, serve with our talents. Use that talent to win a soul, to smile. Some of you, you have a talent of smiling. Your smile, just as for example, a smile can win a million dollar contract. Beautiful smile. And you come to church and you just smile to people and they're like, hmm, that's such a beautiful smile. And I feel so warm and loved. Like this lady here, giving me a beautiful smile. Your talent. When Jesus came and picked the disciples, every disciple had a talent they brought on board. Give him your talents. Last, your treasure. Your treasure. Where you see Solomon giving his treasure. Thousand burnt offerings. Giving. Treasure. You don't put so much of your money and your heart into the treasures in this world. The mo no. Moth and rust or what? Destroy. Honor him. And you see, the amazing thing is with every commandment God gives us to love or to obey, he adds a blessing. Isn't he such a loving God? He adds a blessing. He 
He's so amazing and so loving. I was blown away by the words of C.C. Winans in her song. I love you, Lord, for your faithfulness never leaves me. All my days I've been held by your hand. The first line in that song always catches me. I love you. I love you, Lord. It should be something we say to him often. Good morning, Father. And you know what? Today I just want to remind you how much I love you. So I'm giving you the first moments of my time during my devotion with you this morning. I'm here to hear from you. I'm giving you my time as I come together and join the CCC Apenkwa family worshiping you in church. I'm giving of my talents as I serve as a choir in the choir, as I serve as a children's minister, as I serve as a charis leader, as I serve as a doctor, wherever I find myself, as I serve as a businessman, I'm honoring you in my workplace and in my business. I'm giving you my talent and I'm giving you my treasure. Every time I'm asked to give an offering, I give you my best. I don't give you my leftovers. I honor you in my tithe and with my offerings. Knowing full well that as I give and as I love you, your love for me is relentless. Reckless. Even if I go wayward, you will leave behind the 99 and come chasing after me. Because you love me so much. Quick recap. Our time. Can I hear you say time? Our time. Our talents. And our treasure. Let's let God see how much we love him. Let's let God see how much we love him. As we surrender our time, our talents, and our treasure. And let's remember to tell God how much we love him. I want you all to join me in this song. I love you, Lord. I can't hear you. Mm. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake, from the moment that you wake up, until I till you lay your head, you say of the goodness of God. All your life, all your life, and all my life, he's been so faithful. He's been so faithful.
Amen. Mm-hmm. 